Greetings, prop makers of the world! We are off on yet another exciting adventure into the world of prop making. And this week, as you can see, we're off to ancient Egypt. This is a cartouche. Uh, usually was used to uh, signify a pharaoh. This one happens to say Samhain. I don't know where that came from. That was just random. But anyways, this is a great build using nothing but one inch EVA foam and acrylic grout to create a brilliant effect. Oh yeah, and paint, but that hardly counts. But this is a, an amazing effect that happens and the finished result is great. And the best part is, is this can be used in many different places. Regardless, this was inspired by a video I saw this week. Freddy Zone did an amazing video on an Egyptian build. And ever since I saw that video, Egypt has been on my mind. So this is the result of what happens when I go exploring YouTube at all hours of the day. We take a trip to Egypt. Regardless, enjoy the video and uh, have a good one. This is a great build. All right, up on the screen right now, you should see a cut list for a sheet of two by two foot by four foot uh, one inch styrofoam. The high density stuff, you don't use that white bobbly stuff. I know there's another name for it, but anyways, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be focusing on the back part here. You'll see that there's items labeled back, backside, you know, all that such. We're going to start with those. So, goodbye measurements. So, here we go. We need both of these cut out first. Now, both of these being cut out uh, are our half circles. There's going to be another radius on the inside of here. If you can't cut it out and save it, that's okay. You're just gonna have to cut it out of another piece somewhere else. You might have to have scraps or something, or you can skip it all together, it's up to you. But anyways, we're gonna put that down. You do the top and the bottom, you get it all cut out, however you want to see fit. I did mine on a bandsaw, you can do it on a hot knife, you can take your time with an X-Acto knife. Multiple options, we've been over this. So. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be marking out our sides. Now we want to get a one inch mark onto three sides of both of the edges. So start marking one inch. Once you have the one inch done, take a T-square, put it down, draw the line, continue. Mark the top if you, just so you know where we're going to go to. So once we've got this, I'm going to go over what we're going to be doing here. I'll be back. Now, we are onto the stage where you kind of a jump here to everything being done, but it's kind of hard to explain otherwise. So, first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna use your Gorilla Glue to glue these things down. And what I did is I used pins, you can probably see them there, just to hold it in place until it's set, which was overnight. And I'm just gonna pull all those out now. Oh, that glue is so good, it actually holds the pins in place with a little bit of glue that it hit. So once this is all done, now I have done like a, a ribbed look for my barrier. You don't have to do this. The exterior is going to be 100% what you feel like doing because if you want this to be smooth, it's easy. And it's more suited if you are doing a different finish, like if you're doing a, like a metallic finish, this would look really good just as a straight, you know, flat. It's up to you. you. This is my example. You don't have to follow this example exactly. This is more about the techniques to get everything in place. So anyways, you saw before that I did the one inches. Then what I did is I took it and I used, I used my spindle sander because it's perfect vertical. You can use um, a sanding Dremel to do this as well, or you can cut these gaps or you can burn them in with a soldering iron. There's so many options here. This is just what I did because I had access to my spindle sander and it works really well for something like this. So before I glued it in, I spindle sanded the inside edge on both of these. Then glued it in and then after, all I did is I matched up the edges as I spindle sanded. And after it's been glued, I once again hit the spindle sander on the verticals to get it all nice and smooth all the way through. And it makes music. Um, so this is pretty much finished now. This is the cartouche. We have to do the bottom. I'll come on to that after, because that's just a small change. It'll be a, a final thing. So we're just gonna throw that out of the way. Now, on my Google Drive down below, I think there's two sets here actually. On my Google Drive down below, 
you will find this file here. Now, on the website uh, Defont, you will find a hieroglyphic font that I used here. I'm going to be including just these ones so you can mimic exactly what I did. If you want to change your hieroglyphics, go download that font, set the size to where you need it and print it out. I, and uh, that's the best way of doing it to get your own hieroglyphics as, as you want them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting these onto card, gluing these onto card, and then using my hot wire knife, I'm going to be cutting these out. Some of these details I might change to make a little bit thicker so they work better when I, you know, go to cut it so it's not, uh, not a horrible, fragile thing. But for the most part, they're actually pretty good. The only thing is, is when you go to do this, I believe you will need, on the file, it'll tell you how many you need. I think you need two of these because it's just how Sam Hain. Anyways, it's a Sam Hain. Well, that's a fun little thing. So I'm going to go get these put onto card. I'm going to get these all glued down, cut out, and then I'm going to come back and talk to you about how you go about texturing these. You don't have to texture them. You can just put them on flat and they'll look fantastic. But I'm going to do a little bit of tiny bit of texturing with, uh, with a Dremel just to make them look cool because I can. And that will lead us into the final step. Anyways, I'll be back. All right, just a quick update. So once you've got all of these items cut out, we're going to be putting some texture on them. And what I do is I use the the printed one. You can see this is how I tagged it all on to make sure that when I cut it with a hot knife, it stayed to the template size. But anyways, what I've done here is you can see that I have used a pink marker just to pretty much draw lines where the lines on this kind of correspond to. And I just cut them out. You have some fun with the angles. You can see here where I did deep angles where the wings meet the feathers to give it some depth. And over here as well, you can see that, you know, one angle here and then just drew it on and just cut it out. Have fun with it. And you can do all sorts of looks and how all of the pieces come together is really nice. Have some fun with it. It's not an exacting art. So I'm going to finish doing this one and this one. And then I'm going to glue it on. I'm going to come back and talk to you about what we're doing for the finish on this. I'll be back. All right. A quick update. As you can see, all of the characters are now in place and they've all been contoured and shaped. They've also been glued on. If you look really closely, you can probably see the glue sticking out the bottom. Now there's a little space left at the bottom here because I'm going to be putting in a 3D printed element here that's going to be made out of gold and black. It's going to look pretty cool. Now this down here, the bottom of the cartouche, this is just a piece of styrofoam that's about the same height as the whole depth of this. And what you want to do is you want to take it, I screwed it on and glued it. So over time, once the glue sets, it's going to really hold together. Just as long as I don't glue it to the base there. There we go. Now this up here is air dry clay. Brilliant. Or not air dry clay. I make that mistake every time. Air dry foam. Brilliant stuff. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting it on here to hold until it dries a little bit, then I'm going to pull it off and we're going to be finishing this air dry clay. Look at that, it's already starting to dry up. I'm going to go and finish that air dry clay slightly different, but we need to have the shape so when it comes and goes, it'll hold and it'll look good. So anyways, because this gets a treatment that that doesn't. Maybe it could get that treatment. I'll see, I'll decide and if I change my mind, I change my mind. I'll just say, you know what I said before, just don't do it. Anyways. I'll be back once the next time you see this, I, it will be covered and I'm going to show you what I used and how to mix it and all that. Anyways, I'll be back. Okay, so we've got this sitting outside and it's drying. It now has a layer of the acrylic um, grout on it. I'll show the bag as a picture up here so you know what to go for. This is amazing stuff. You can actually get it in different colors. I happen to have gray around, so that's what's going to be. But So now I have to go do a whole bunch of painting on this. So regardless, I just want to show you what it looks like with just the acrylic grout and how it works. Stuff's brilliant because it's actually a hard coat. It is really good for styrofoam. If you haven't used it before, give it a shot. You'll find that it's an awesome thing to go with. So next time you see this, it's going to be having a base coat on. I'm going to go over all the dry brushing. All right. We arrive at the final destination. And all I have done here is this is a base coat of cashmere tan which almost used up an entire bottle of it actually. And then along these edges, I did a uh, burnt umber just to bring out the detail around the edges that little bit. 
and as you can see here just going down giving a little bit of detail in the front and the sides don't go over the top and then down these sides here I did the exact same thing so a little bit of dry brushing goes a long way with this now finally to add that last little bit of detail I took a little bit of raw umber and you can see just the darker areas that I've done here go through age it up to the level that you want now the final thing that we finished off is down here I just painted that air dry foam in gold and then hot glued it on and this is just a 3d printed element you can skip this I just think it looked cool so I left it on but anyways thanks so much for hanging out for the uh, video and the tutorial I really like how this thing all turned out and if you end up building it please share with me I would love to see the outcome anyways thanks for hanging out once again if you like the video hit the like button if you really like the video hit the subscribe and uh, stay tuned for more fun uh, the videos coming up are gonna be a little bit different because they're going to be more me just building and you along for the ride because a lot of the techniques that I use can be viewed in my previous video so we're just going to go forward and I'm going to show you exactly how I go about continuing to create this insanity that is my props anyways I hope you enjoyed the video and have a good one